constructed to contain the two tablets of the Ten Commandments, one of the great mysteries for biblical scholars and believers alike is exactly where the Ark of the Covenant stood in the Temple King Solomon built in Jerusalem nearly 3,000 years ago. The Ark of the Covenant itself, the wooden box used to keep the stone tablets on which the Ten Commandments are thought to have been penned, has vanished into the mists of time. However, an archaeological architect claims that the Ark's place of honor is still visible today on Jerusalem's Temple Mount, inside the Muslim shrine known as the Dome of the Rock. What lies beneath this massive gleaming gold dome? Why exactly is there such fierce competition for control of this location? Join us in today's video as we attempt to unravel all of these secrets. One of the most iconic images of the Middle East is undoubtedly the Dome of the Rock, shimmering in the setting sun of Jerusalem. The Dome of the Rock, which sits atop the Haram al-Sharif, the highest point in Old Jerusalem, dominates the cityscape and served as a testament to the might of the new faith of Islam in the 7th century. The Dome of the Rock is one of the earliest surviving Islamic structures. This magnificent structure is not a mosque, as is widely assumed, and researchers continue to argue its original role and meaning. Between the death of the Prophet Muhammad in 632 and the completion of the Dome of the Rock in 691-92, there was intermittent conflict in Arabia and the Holy Land surrounding Jerusalem. The first Arab armies that emerged from the Arabian Peninsula were focused on conquest and empire building rather than construction. As a result, the Dome of the Rock was one of the first Islamic structures ever built. It was built between 685 and 691 to 92 by Abd al Malik, possibly the most significant Umayyad caliph, as a religious focal point for his supporters while he was fighting a civil war against Ibn Zubair. When Abd al Malik began building the Dome of the Rock, he did not have control of the Kaaba, Islam's holiest site in Mecca. The dome stands on the Haram al-Sharif, a massive open-air platform that today contains the Al-Aqsa Mosque and various other holy structures. Few places are more sacred to Christians, Jews, and Muslims than Haram al-Sharif. It is the Temple Mount, the location of the Jewish Second Temple, which was demolished by the Roman Emperor Titus in 70 CE while putting down the Jewish insurrection. A Roman temple was afterwards built on the site and the Temple Mount was abandoned in late antiquity. A massive rock in the center of the Dome of the Rock is thought to be the spot where Abraham was prepared to sacrifice his son Ismail, or Isaac in Judeo-Christian mythology. Muslims believe that the rock symbolizes Prophet Muhammad's night journey. One night, while Muhammad was sleeping near the Kaaba in Mecca, the angel Gabriel appeared to him and led him to Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, the furthest mosque in Jerusalem. Muhammad ascended from the rock to heaven, where he encountered other prophets such as Moses and Christ, witnessed paradise and hell, and finally saw God enthroned and circumambulated by angels. The rock is surrounded by two ambulatories, the aisles that circle it, and an octagonal external wall. The center colonnade is composed of four piers and twelve columns that support a round drum leading to a two-layer dome that measures more than twenty meters in diameter. The lower registers of the colonnades are encased in marble, while the top registers are ornamented with outstanding mosaics. The airy interior ambience is created by light streaming in via grilled windows in the drum and external walls. In this sparkling light, golden mosaics resembling jewels sparkle. Byzantine and Sasanian crowns, in the midst of vegetable motifs, are also visible. Until 1453, when its capital Constantinople fell to the Ottoman Turks, the Byzantine Empire stood to the north and west of the new Islamic Empire. To the east, the old Sasanian Empire of Persia imploded under pressure from the Arabs but nevertheless provided winged crown motifs that can be found in the Dome of the Rock. Is the Ark of the Covenant housed within the Dome of the Rock? Some will tell you that the Ark of the Covenant has been lost and will never be found. To be sure, many have sought it in vain during the last 2000 years, and some even believe it will never be found. However, the Ark of the Covenant is not so much lost as it is carefully hidden, and its location is not beyond our ability to discern. Before we discuss where the Ark is, we must first examine where it is not. Some believe it was destroyed when the Babylonians attacked Jerusalem in 586 BC, a viewpoint found in the 1st century AD Apocalypse of Ezra, which is echoed in many conflicting Talmudic opinions. However, this theory is doubtful. The prophet Jeremiah mentions the Ark's removal during Josiah's reign, which ended in 609 BC, more than two decades before the Babylonian conquest, asterisk Jeremiah 3 16 asterisk. 
Furthermore, neither Jeremiah's lists nor the official records include the Ark among the sacred objects stolen by the Babylonians, asterisk 2 Kings 25-13-17 asterisk. But what happened to the Ark if the Babylonians did not take it? Its absence was acknowledged even before the construction of the Second Temple, as it is conspicuously missing in Hezekiah's visionary restored temple, asterisk Ezekiel 40-48 asterisk. Ancient authorities also agreed that no ark was ever seen in the Second Temple. Despite the fact that the books of Maccabees, which represent institutional Judaism in the 2nd century BC, make the return of God's glory contingent on the revelation of the ark, no replacement was ever made, asterisk 2 Maccabees 2 colon 7 8 asterisk. When we ask, where is the Ark of the Covenant, nothing stands out more than the Bible's silence on the subject. How did the centerpiece of Israel's faith fade away so quietly? This eloquent silence implies that the Ark was removed with the knowledge of Judah's rulers and temple officials. If it had been otherwise, someone would have surely documented its loss for future generations, as they did with other artifacts. It's possible that the final chapters of Chronicles, which conclude the Jewish Bible, contain the last information on the Arkansas. The Ark had been placed in the temple, and the people were instructed to travel to Jerusalem to build the temple, asterisk 2 Chronicles 35 colon 3 asterisk, 36 colon 23. This could be a warning to future generations of Judahites to go to Jerusalem, find the Ark, and rebuild the temple around it. But if the Ark is still hidden where Josiah and his men placed it, where could that be? When David prepared the site for the temple, he transformed the mountaintop into a flat surface supported by a substructure with tunnels, chambers, and cisterns running beneath the mount itself. A cross-section of the mount, much like one of the Great Pyramids, would reveal secret chambers and passageways. David had a valid reason for doing this. The temple was to be Israel's most important structure, serving as the national treasury, the repository of sacred scriptures, genealogical records, and Israel's most sacred artifacts, including the Arkansas. As a result, to protect these treasures from any potential threat, the mount needed to be well supplied with hidden vaults. Since the temple's destruction in AD 70, the mount has been neglected, profaned, disputed, conquered, and built upon for over two millennia. However, no one has ever excavated it. Not even after the Judeo-Persian attack on the Byzantines turned the Temple Mount into a garbage dump after the Muslim conquest. When Caliph Abd al-Malik built a shrine exactly where the temple once stood, it remained in place to this day. However, the passages beneath the mount have remained sealed throughout the ages. The most likely scenario is that Josiah's Kohanim, priests, hid the ark in the tunnels beneath the Temple Mount. In fact, the Bible itself implies this. According to the books of Kings, the Ark's poles are still in the holy place today. Since these books were written after the Babylonian destruction, and because the poles could not have been separated from the Ark, we must conclude that the Ark and its poles were present in the holy place before, during, and after the Babylonian invasion. But the Babylonians did not find it. How is this possible? According to Hebrew concepts of sacred space, the holiness of the temple extends vertically, both upward into the heavens and downward into the earth. The area directly above and below the Holy of Holies is considered just as sacred as the area at ground level. This belief is one reason modern Israel prohibits air traffic from flying over the Temple Mount. The implication that the poles remain in the holy place today suggests that the Ark is still hidden deep beneath the Holy of Holies on the Temple Mount. Rabbinic literature confirms that the Ark once rested inside the temple on top of the Great Flat Rock, the very summit of Mount Moriah, known as the Foundation Stone, which formed the floor of the Holy Place. Today, the Islamic Dome of the Rock, or Qubad al-Sakra, is named after this same stone. The Ark once rested on this rock, and the tips of its poles pressed into the sanctuary curtain, assuring the ministering Kohanim of its presence, even when hidden from view. Whether or not the Ark will be seen again depends on many factors, most of which are tied to modern Middle Eastern politics. During the 1967 Six-Day War, Israeli forces took control of all of Jerusalem, including the Temple Mount and its surrounding walls. However, ten days later, Israel's defense minister, Moshe Dayan an epitome of the secular Jew returned the entire temple area to Jordanian control, except for the Western Wall, to ensure the acceptance of Israel's gains. While this decision may have made Israel's 1967 conquests more secure, it earned Dayan eternal scorn from religious Jews. 
Jordan, along with Palestinians and other Muslim nations, established the Jerusalem Islamic Waqf to manage the Temple Mount. The Waqf still controls the Mount today, prohibiting any archaeological activity. Any challenge to their authority is met with immediate retaliation in Jerusalem and elsewhere. What are your thoughts on the Ark of the Covenant? Let us know in the comments below. Christian Jerusalem in AD 614